G-Man Boxing. Do you know what I mean? Every single live he donates. I see him on other lives donating, donating, donating. He's got the bag on it. All right, people. So we obviously know the Anthony Joshua return, which Eddie Hearn was talking about doing it in December. That's being pushed back to next year. Okay. Now, there's been a few opponents mentioned. All right. There's been a few opponents mentioned. Originally, the first opponent I heard of was Chris Ariola, And I kind of just thought, really? Ariola of all people? Then I was hearing Otto Valian. I think he even said it in an interview. I think it was with ID Boxing. That, yeah, I've been approached by Team Joshua with a view of having that fight. So I'm thinking, okay, Oliver Lane. I mean, he's it, it's a fight that I'd be picking AJ to win, but it's a tricky fight. It's a very tricky fight. But it could give him a lot of confidence to beat a Southpaw. I know that'd be the third fight in a row against a Southpaw. But I could look at that and think, okay, interesting, interesting. Then I was here in Gerald Washington. And I was kind of like... Gerald Washington of all people, I was like, AJ will definitely iron him out, probably iron him out pretty quickly, but, you know, I, I don't know, for me that's just kind of like, that's just, Washington at this stage is just levels down. Now, Eddie Hearn was on the Zone Boxing Show today, and he actually stated that the front runner, and it's looking likely now, is actually Dylan White for January or February. Hearn said that he thinks Dylan White is probably the front runner if he beats Jermaine Franklin on November 26th. But he also says that Otto Valian is also an option for Anthony Joshua. That to me is interesting. And he also said that Anthony Joshua actually wants to return in a real fight and he doesn't see any value in a tune up fight. Eddie Hearn said, hence why Dylan White is the front runner. The rematch is now likely. January or February next year. Interesting. I mean, the rematch has been talked about for a while now. I mean, it goes back to well, 2018. It was being talked about for 2019. And it would have taken place. I mean, just think how, how different things could have been. You know, obviously, the plan for Sky was... And they want Anthony Joshua in two fights in 2019. They wanted him in a fight at Wembley Stadium in April. Middle of April 2019. And they wanted him... I think... They're trying to get Wilder over the line for the end of that year. That was the plan. This is boxing. Plans in boxing have a habit of going awry. We know that. It's always say like you should never probably plan in boxing. You know, when you start planning in boxing, unless both guys aren't going to do anything until they get in the ring, chances are stuff's not going to go the way you want. But the plan was for those two to fight. I, I if I even remember correctly, it might have been August or April 19, 2019, in around that time. And Dylan White, Dylan White's fault, he said the money wasn't right. It was his fault. I don't believe Sky were too happy with that. And I think it was four million or something like that, which would have been at the time a career high payday. But anyway, he, he didn't take the anti-Joshua fight. Joshua went on to sign up to fight Terrell Miller in Washington, ended up fighting Andy Ruiz. We all know what happened there. That made 2019 very interesting for a lot of people. A very interesting year in terms of boxing. But there's been a lot of talk about that fight. And if memory serves me correct, I do believe one of the reasons why Dylan White was on a couple of AJ's undercards back in, like, I think 2017 and things like that was because he was on standby for a few of those shows, just in case, just in case. I think that was one of the reasons. I think it was Takam was the next standby for the Pula fight, which was meant to happen in 2017. I think Dylan White I heard someone saying that he was the next in line after that. So there's always been Joshua White. There's always kind of been those two linked together. Now, obviously, both guys seem to have a lot of respect. Well, more respect now for each other than they did back then. And both guys have had their trials and tribulations since that fight in 2015. So if they were to do it, I mean, I would imagine Dylan White's going to get by Jermaine Franklin. I've been looking at a few of his fights, and even if you just look at his box track, he's, he doesn't look like he, even now with Dylan White, with his punch resistance, maybe not the best. I don't even think Jermaine Franklin doesn't strike me as a particularly big puncher. I mean, he's gone in there with guys who have, let's be frank, like people like Pavel Sowers, they've not been hard to stop. And he's going rounds and losing rounds, going the distance and losing rounds, I should say. So... Can't imagine Franklin's going to give much resistance, but you don't know. I mean, Dylan White, in the last two years, he's been knocked out badly by uppercuts. 
you know, if you think about it, like in his last three fights, he's one and two. So obviously he took the L against Pavek and avenged that, and then obviously got knocked out by Tyson Fury. So Dylan White, I mean, some people would say they don't know how how he is after the Pavekin knockout which was two years ago. I mean, you're just going to compound that with the Tyson Fury knockout. So I'd say Dylan White's chin is probably, I'd say it's pretty bad at this stage. Pretty damn bad. It might even be worse than Joshua's chin at this stage. You never know. We'll, we'll, we'll know in the ring. I mean, if he's getting buzzed by Jermaine Franklin, he's going to have problems. going to have problems moving forward. But if they do look to do this fight, how do I see it going? Well, it's an interesting one because both guys, as I said, have had their trials and tribulations. They've had their ups. Oh, and they've had their downs. Um, I would obviously make Joshua a favourite. He won the first fight. And obviously, I think he still has a lot more life left in the tank at the end of the day. He's had a tough fight against Klitschko, which he came through and won. Got off the deck to beat him. He was dropped three or four times. Four times? I think it was three or four times against Andy Ruiz. Avenged that. And then, in terms of the Usek fights, he was just outboxed by Usek. But he didn't. He probably took more damage in the first fight, near the back end of the fight, than he did really in, in the whole of the second fight. I mean, the 10th round was a bit tough for Joshua, yeah, but Usek wasn't, Usek was lighting him up, but he wasn't lighting him up with hard, explosive shots and, you know, staggering his legs or anything like that. That was in the rematch. So Joshua probably has a lot more miles in the tank. Always run the risk against someone like Dylan White with his punching power, as we, see, as we saw in their first fight, or the only fight they've had, Joshua getting caught with a left hook in the second round. That... That Dylan White who fought Anthony Joshua, he was not 100%, lest we forget. He was training at the time with Jonathan Banks. He was following Vladimir Klitschko around the world. He looked in pretty poor shape, aesthetically. You know, Dylan White's never been body beautiful, but in that fight particularly, aesthetically, he didn't look great. And he had an injured shoulder. Now, with the way Dylan White throws his shots, it's not really, you know, you got to expect shoulder injuries with the way he throws his shots. He's very crude, very swings and... You know, he's kind of almost instilled that in someone like an Alan Babich, who tomorrow a midweek report we're going to be having a bit of a discussion about and what he's going to do next. So that's what we're looking at early next year. It obviously depends how Dylan White comes through Franklin. I mean, God forbid if he loses, that won't be happening, the, the Joshua fight. But if he comes through in a real tough fight, he might need longer than a couple of months to recover. I don't think Dylan White's punch resistance is good enough to go in there with someone like Joshua. I think that Joshua's uppercut is very, very good. And to be honest with you, I would... Would I say it's almost the perfect opponent? No. Not really, in terms of a comeback fight to kind of really, you know, make Joshua look devastating. I think that Dylan White... I think Dylan White's power may just maybe make Anthony Joshua a bit cautious early on. I don't think Gage is going to walk right through him. But once AJ finds his feet and he gets the uppercut work, and I think that this fight's going to end probably spectacularly, like Dylan White, all of his knockout losses have. Do I think it'll go as long as the first fight? Yeah, probably, I reckon it would go about five, six, seven rounds, a bit like the first fight. Do I think it's going to be kind of as dramatic or as crude? No, I don't think it'll be as good as the first fight. But I think there'll be moments, put it like that. So Dylan White, Anthony Joshua, likely for 2023. I wonder as well, is Eddie Hearn looking at Dylan White and thinking, right, we have this deal with the zone with Anthony Joshua, all right? As much as we want to make, maybe Anthony Joshua, maybe Anthony Joshua being a you know business savvy knows, look, I wouldn't mind fighting a Gerald Washington. I wouldn't mind that fight at all. I'd quite like that fight, actually, because it's going to give me a little run out, going to look devastating, and, you know, I'll do what I got to do. But at the end of the day, the zone are paying me crazy amounts of money. You know, they're not going to recoup that on a, a show with Gerald Washington. They're going to lose. And they're already losing enough money. So they're going to want to do pay-per-view. You're not going to be able to do... Like with Joshua now coming off back-to-back -back losses, having a breakdown in the ring, not having probably the, the pulling power. He still has pulling power, but not the one he once had. You go in there with Gerald Washington, you're not going to be able to do that on pay-per-view. I don't think they win. I, I don't think the zone... I think the zone even know. We're not going to get away with doing that on pay-per-view. Whereas a Dylan White fight, yeah, you probably could get away with doing it on pay-per-view. If it's sold, right? In fact, you probably definitely could do it on pay-per-view. Not to say that they should, but you know what I mean? Like, I could see why they do it. I mean, you could say, well, the first fight wasn't for any title. It was for a British title, but that's not pay-per-view worthy. Both guys were pretty much novice pros. So 
they've done it once i don't see why they wouldn't do it again and yeah i reckon they would do dylan white i reckon they're thinking they have the business hat on as well as having you know the matchmaking who's best to bring him in there with next hat on eddie hearn saying age doesn't want an easy touch doesn't want an easy tune up fight i understand that probably from a business point of view he's thinking and he's got shares in the zone he's probably thinking himself well hang on a minute like if i do the, the, the zone are paying me what 50 million a fight it's 100 mil a year you know at the end of the day they are gonna they're already hemorrhaging money if i'm fighting gerald washington and i'm charging pay-per-view and the pay-per-view is tanking you know that's just asking for trouble from a business point of view so maybe they're looking at Anthony joshua and thinking what's the kind of lowest risks fight we can take to build them back up all the while doing them on pay-per-view maybe that's the kind of way they're looking at rather than stick them in there with washington stick them in there with whoever whoever i was going to say just, just you know someone who will just make joshua just you know dispense off pretty damn quickly someone like that maybe they're looking at it in a sense of right we, we'd love to do that but we need to think about the business at the same time as well and we can't get away with doing a pay-per-view against a gerald washington we can't get away we're doing a pay-per-view against a chris Ariola. we can get away we're doing a pay-per-view against none of a lean dylan white maybe that's what they're looking at i don't know let me know in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed the video smash the like button people if you can obviously we're doing a good few more videos this week that's the active activity even if there's no news we're going to make news i've got a couple of ideas for videos even ones that aren't necessarily boxing news related just talking about people i want to do a video on boots ennis and how i think he's just a precocious talent so we'll try and get that in this week at some stage and yeah We'll see how we go from here. Hope you enjoyed it, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. For now, people, I'll talk to you. Peace.